Welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to another word-filled message by David Entry. Preaching is the means by which God manifests his word and nourishes our spirits. May the life of God enter into you and you as you listen to this message. Be blessed. Jesus is the center of it all. Bible says that in the beginning was the word. So Jesus is the center, is the beginning. Everything God does rises and falls based on somebody's encounter with the word. Now listen to this. We have gathered together tonight to spend time praying and hearing God's word. Praying and hearing. Jesus said, watch and pray. So we hear and we pray. We hear and we pray. So we are here to pray and we are here to hear. Because uh, I, I, I want to say this, that uh, nobody has any special problem. Nobody has a problem. That's my problem. You don't know. I have it. My problem is very unique. No, no. It's special ignorance. Nobody has special problem. It's people's special I- I- ignorance that makes that problem special. So the nature of our ignorance, the nature of what we don't know. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11, it says that, For we are not ignorant of the devices of the devices or Satan's devices. We are not ignorant of his devices. Why? He said, lest Satan should get an advantage of us. So New King James says, let I prefer the New King. Lest Satan should take advantage of us. He will take it. For we are not, because we are not ignorant, that's why he can't take it. So he only takes advantage over us based on what we don't know. Satan thrives on ignorance of people. Satan thrives. And what kind of ignorance? I'm not talking about uh, current affairs. There are people who are very up to date, astute with current affairs. But boy, Satan is having a field trip over their lives. So it is the word of God we have not been exposed to and we haven't grasped. The word we haven't grasped is what Satan takes advantage of. So when there is no word, Satan will target you and buffet you. He says that, so one of his plans is, he, he says that he immediately came, the enemy came immediately to steal the word. So tonight, I want to talk about catch the word before he steals the word. He steals the word. Catch the word. Catch the word. Someone say, I'm catching the word. Say, I'm catching the word. The word, the word. I'm catching the word. The word. I'm catching the word. Hallelujah. We are here. Even the quality of your prayer life is at the mercy of your, of your insight in God's word. The quality of your prayer life is not the longevity of it. Even though that place a is important. But the quality of your, uh, my prayer life, our prayer life, is predicated on the quality of our insight in God's word. The quality of your praise, praise Praising God carries power. It releases power. It releases glory. It releases such potency of God's majesty in people's life that is, uh, is unfathomable. But why is it that praise sometimes, people's praise is just singing. And so it doesn't carry the weight. Even praising, Bible says, praise God with understanding. Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 47, verse 7. He said, praise him with understanding. So the, your insight is what determines your insight. He says that praise, yeah, uh, sing praises with understanding. If he praises, it's not just feelings. There must be understanding and getting the feelings. 
our feelings must be undergirded by understanding when it comes to praises. And so I thank God for these uh, few three days. I'm praying that someone will catch something. Ah, you, you catch something. You will catch something that will radically change your story, radically change your life. Radical. Listen, the Kado Shubada higher. Even health, even the blessings in our health, the blessings in our health has everything to do with the the word of God we know. So to walk in in covenant health, you have to catch a word. And listen, don't say because oh we believe we believe that God is healer, it's a healer. So no, it's not enough. You have to catch a word and believe in the word and on the grounds of that I know God is a healer and that's the word I have. I'm holding on the word. He said, is there not a bomb in Gilead? Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 22. Is that not a, Why are the daughters of my people sick? Is that not a bomb? Is that not a bomb is Gilead, in Gilead? Is that not a fish in there? Why then is... is uh, uh, why then is there no recovery for the health of the daughters of my people? Why? Why is there not bomb? There is bomb in Gilead tonight. Hallelujah. There is bomb in Gilead. I don't know the state of your health, but I believe Isaiah chapter 33 verse 24 he said none of the inhabitants will say I am sick Kadababa. guys I feel the anointing the inhabitants will not say I am sick Hey, Kadababa. those in this platform as we are catching the word we will not say we are sick we will not say we are sick we will not say we are sick is there not a bomb is there not a bomb in Gilead is there not a bomb in Gilead? Gilead is the place of God's people. There's bomb. There's healing bomb here. There is healing bomb here. He said unto you in the book of Malachi, Sir, shall the son of righteousness, I think chapter 4, Malachi said, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. Hallelujah. The son of righteousness, he shall arise with healing in his wings. Healing in his wings. The son of righteousness will arise with healings in his wings. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness. This son of righteousness is, is about Jesus. Okay, Jesus is the son. The son the, of the bright and morning star. The sun is a star, the brightest. So he is the sun of righteousness, shall arise with healing in his wings, and you shall go, go out and grow, grow fat. He says that you will be fat. You will be fat in the spirit. Why? Because the sun of righteousness shall arise. He says that uh, those who fear my name, the sun of righteousness shall arise with, uh, with healing in his wings. With healing, I don't know who I'm talking to, but the days of your health affliction are over from now. The days of affliction against your health, those days are over from now. You will not, no more be counting days, how long you've not been well, how long this has been. You will no more be counting those days again because those days are over. The sun of righteousness is arising with healing in its wings unto us because there is a balm in Gilead. There is a physician, Jesus, the healer. In the book of Matthew, it says that for he himself, Matthew chapter 8, I think 17 or so. For he himself took our infirmities. He took it. He took it. That it might be fulfilled. From verse, let's look at verse, verse 16. It makes sense when we go to. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed. Watch this. And he cast out the spirits with, oh my God, thank you. How did he cast, how, how did he cast them out? With a word. Not with words, so with a word. <laughs> go! 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 <laughs> I command whatever is sitting on your life. Go! In the name of Jesus. Anything that is sitting on your health, sitting on your marriage, sitting on your career, sitting on your life, sitting on your, on your peace, I curse it and command it. Go! 
leave you alone. It leaves you alone right from tonight. That thing leaves you alone. That harassment, that demonic harassment over your marriage, over your family, that demonic harassment over your mind, it leaves you alone in the name of Jesus. If you can speak in tongues, you can pray. Pray just for one minute right now. I feel there's a turn around. There's a turn around. There is a turn around. There's a turn around. Ileria batahandu, Ileria batahunda kaya, Iliko bahunde, Alu habahanda, Alu rabahanda, Alu rabahanda, Shaga hey, Rabada hey, Rabada hey, Labara hasuka handa, Ilusa handa, Iluhi handa, Ileka baruhasa, Iluba rabasanda, Iluba sabrahande, Ileka hilu sahandi kabunghunde, Kidika shage rekete, Kereido, Reido, Reido, Randa basanda, Rababahaya. Lord, ya babando, ilaya da babasara, ilaya babashanda, ilaya kabara bashaya. In Jesus' mighty name, it says that He cast out devils with a word. He and He cast out the spirits with a word. And watch this, and healed all who were sick. On what grounds? Verse seventeen. That's why did he heal them? That it might be fulfilled. <sighs> ah! Thank you, Jesus. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Isaiah said, he himself, talking about Jesus, Jesus himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He took, that is why he healed them with the word. That's why the 16 was there. Because of this word, he, was, he had to fulfill this word. And the fulfillment of this word must be expressed. The fulfillment of this word must have a physical expression within the context of their living. It must have an existential expression. This verse 16 is the existential expression of the spoken word in Isaiah. And, and he cast out spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. Why? How was he able to heal them? Because... He, he himself has, a Bible, he himself took, it's written, that he himself took, took our infirmities and bore the sicknesses. So you are not permitted to carry it. So he was clearing it out of their system because he had taken it. Now, there's no way in scripture recorded that he brought it back after he took it. If they have taken, somebody has taken your shoes. You said, oh, your trainers, you can't find the, the trainers. And then we see you wearing the trainers. You said, oh, but you said, they didn't bring the trainers. So this one, which is, is the same trainers, but they didn't bring it. So how are you wearing what was stolen? That means it wasn't stolen. You are lying. Someone is, something is not right. So if Jesus took it and he hasn't brought it back, why are you still carrying it? Somebody must catch the word. You have to refuse that. No, I won't carry it. They were carrying it and he came to clear it. Because he had to fulfill the scripture that said he took and he bore. He took the infirmities and he bore our sickness. So he said, ah, why are you like, come here? They brought the people to him. He said, no, you are not supposed to. He, he, he healed the sick because he had already carried it, according to Isaiah. As I say, so he came to fulfill so that it might be fulfilled. There is a, there is a word hanging over your life or your testimony. But it must be executed. So Jesus in his lifetime started executing it. Now he has given us the power to embrace, catch a word, and, and walk in the fulfillment of the word. That is why we are, we are having this word feast. We are coming to feast on the word, pick on certain aspects of the word which we, uh, 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 which we haven't seen expressed and manifested in our life, and feast on it, and feast on it, and feast on it, and enforce it into manifestation. I see the manifestation of the word of God in your life in the name of Jesus. I see the manifestation taking clear physical effect in your life in the name of Jesus. I see the manifestation of the word of God taking clear physical effect in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, before I continue, I would, I would like us to pray for just a short while and I need you to pray and say, Lord, open my spirit that I will catch your word. Listen, if you don't catch a word, you have wasted your time. You have wasted, you must catch a word. A word, when a word enters your spirit, the Bible says it brings forth fruits hundredfold, 
60 for the, the word that will catch. And Satan, he's so good at stealing. He's a thief. He steals the word. What is he stealing the word? Not to keep it. He steals the word away from you so it, it won't bear fruit. He said, the word that goes out of my mouth, it bears fruit. We read it yesterday in Isaiah chapter 55. The word that goes out of my mouth, he said, it will not return to me void. It carries what it takes to change where it goes. <laughs> it carries everything it takes to change where it goes. He said, it shall accomplish what I please, not what the devil wants. What I please, God's pleasure will be accomplished by the spoken word, the word that has come, the word that has landed. The word must land. The, the word must land. We want to pray just for a, a, a moment, and you are going, you're going to say, Lord, open my eyes, open my spirit, that I will catch the word. I will catch a word. I will catch it because your testimony is about to happen. But you need the sperm of God, the seed of God. The word must come for the testimony to manifest. You can't have anything from God without a word. So first of all, you must receive the word. You have to pray, God, enlighten my understanding. I, I open my spirit. I open my spirit. Let me catch your word. Let me catch your word. I'm ready to catch your word. I'm ready to take a word from you. Receive a word from you. Somebody lift up your voice. Pray right now. Oh Lord, I receive grace that I may catch your word. I receive grace to 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 catch your word. A word for my destiny. A word for my testimony. A word for my situation. A, a word. A word. A word in season. A word in season. My word. I'm catching a word. I'm catching a word. My 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 word. Hadaka shada handele be 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 be. Leka baba shada haya. Leka baba shada bahaya. Leka baba shada haya. We open our spirits to you, Lord. We open Holy Spirit. We pray that you deposit yourself. Deposit yourself by your word. By your word. By your word. By your word. Deposit yourself into us, Holy Spirit. Deposit yourself into us by your word. We are exposed. We expose our hearts. We expose. We open our hearts. We open our minds to your word. Let your word come. We open up our ears. Circumcise our ears. Sanctify our, e our ears. Lord, cleanse our ears. Purify our ears so we can hear. We can hear. Give us the ear of the learned. We can hear as the learned. As your word comes, your word will find a place, a resting place in our hearts. Hey, Paul, Shada Hande, Labadaba Holeka. Luhurianda, Luhumanda, Lusunga de Garesh, Lugumbenda Gazjega, Zurianda Shanga Radahai, Labahadesho, Nohadikata. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout Amen. You are receiving a word that will change your story in the name of Jesus. He said, He said, he sent his word. I want to talk about catch the word in the book of Luke chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. In Luke chapter 8, Jesus told them a parable. Um, he told them a story about the word. And I want us to just look at it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Verse 4, And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon, and as, soon as it was, it was sprung up, it it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among stones, and the stones sprang up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit an hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, He that has an ear, let him hear. 
He that has an ear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said unto, uh, and he said, Unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others is to, uh, to others in parables, that seeing they might see and hearing they might they might not understand. Now the parable is this: the foundation of everything you got to understand. The parable is this: the seed is the word of God. That is what determines what of God grows in you. If you receive the seed, it determines what of God grows in you. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. And then he goes on to explain to them in the verse 12 that there by the wayside are they that hear, then cometh the devil. Clear. It's unambiguously clear. There. He said the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. The, if God wants to help you, he will send you a word. Your salvation is a function of the word you have received and believed. He says that as soon as the word, so some of us, as I'm speaking, Satan will try and use other things to distract you. Can you imagine how preposterous it would be to be hearing God's word and then put it, lower the volume completely, and you're watching football? You, you, must, you must be a very, very unfortunate person in life. <laughs> he said, how can Satan deceive you in this way? How can Satan deceive you in this way? That a word is coming and he manages to, for you to look like you are hearing. So, you, you know, there are times you, be, you put on television news, okay, the news. Uh, those of us sometimes, maybe you are in your office, there's TV or something, or you are you're steady. You are preparing for an exam, but your TV is on. That thing, I usually don't understand why people will do that. You are preparing for exam, major exam. And yet, your TV is on as you are studying. And you said, I've turned down the volume. So the volume is completely off. But somewhere along the line, you see, you say, oh, okay, let me see. Then take the remote. Let me see what is, what's going on here. You see, it has a way of distracting you. So Satan is still in the word. Satan is still in the word. You are, you are here, but you are not here. You are too here to be out. And yet, you are too out to be here. And so... We are taking the box, but the word is coming. It's trying to look for where to settle. There's no settling. So it falls by the wayside. <laughs> if it doesn't fall into your heart, it falls by the wayside. In, in, in some chamber of your heart, not in the depth of your heart. It's just by the wayside. And Satan said, So whilst I'm preaching, Satan, guess what? He's also standing by. He's waiting. Some people, even the word doesn't get to them because they didn't hear it. They did. I went for a conference some time ago, and um, I think um, one of the uh, key leaders, uh, senior minister, was tired. So, you know, there are times you are in church, like a uh, night vigil or something, and you are so tired, and you are dozing off. So you tend to not to hear what is going on. So <laughs> when the preaching was going on, and then the, the preacher finished preaching, and he said that, if you want to give your life to Jesus, rise to your feet right now. <laughs> and the bishop got, got up. <laughs> and when he got up, he, he looked around him and he realized, oh, no. He, said, he sat down back. <laughs> he wasn't hearing it. He was there. He wasn't hearing it. You, you can't be there. I remember this very well. This is about 1996. We were in a service where somebody was preaching. And then he spoke about women. So he said, women are blessed and, you know, okay, come, all women, rise to your feet. Then there's this pastor. <laughs> he's, he's a man. But he was asleep. He was sleeping. So when he, he heard the rising sound of the women, he also just got up. <laughs> People told him, no, please sit down. No, not you. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, not you. I remember 19, 1996. I was there. Why? Because he was there. But he was not minding the word. But tonight, somebody's catching a word. 
Somebody is catching a word. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Catch it the word. With rapt attention. You know, after I spoke, the, what the people I don't understand is even the, those who come on the Zoom, not uh, YouTube, they come on the Zoom and their video is blank. Okay. Then they start scrolling and watching other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's very and they normally those with blank videos usually like watching other people yeah they always they come so most of those people never never usually catch the word because their focus is not the word their focus is like a security officer their focus is like an inquirer their focus is like a, a, an observer Spectator, come to her, uh, 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 and then said, said receive it. They watch the way that sister was receiving. If they don't, they don't, they, they are not. So it, you don't see the fruits of the word in there. They are void of testimony. People are bringing their testimony. They never get a testimony moment. Why? Because the word that is supposed to deliver the testimony missed them. Satan stole the word. He said, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. So the word of God is a seed. When it's planted in your heart, it doesn't have a choice but to deliver, according to Isaiah 55. He said it will accomplish. It, it doesn't return to me void. So shall my word be. So shall my word be that goeth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where it doesn't matter the opposition. The word of God can prosper once it's received. That is why I believe in this prophetic word. There is there no balm in Gilead if you receive it fully. It doesn't matter the condition. The word can override. It's just like if you you know. You want to build, maybe the government wants to build a stadium, Olympic stadium, kind of, maybe a stadium somewhere. And they say, oh no, there are buildings there, so you can't build. And the buildings are empty. Uh, maybe some flats, um, seven-story flats and different. And then they said, oh, sorry, flats, so what can we do? There's already flats there. We can't, oh, come on. Once we have bulldozers, and machinery, we can ground all those things, we can clear it. it. Those things can be cleared and then we have a plain land and build what we want to build. That's what the word of God does. It doesn't matter the opposition. If, if bulldozers can clear a land, maybe a forest land, they want to build something nice building, but there's forest trees, it's not a problem, it's not an obstacle. Just get the machines in. Get, and the word of God, when it comes, it has its own internal machinery. Internal machinery, it, it, to, it to grade out, clear off all the obstacles as long as it is received, as, as long as someone catches the word. When you catch the word, you have caught the nature of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you catch the word, Bible says that the word of God that goes out of my mouth, it says that it, 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 uh, uh, it's spirit and it's life. It's, quick, it's a quickening spirit. It's a quickening spirit. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 63, it says that for the word that I speak, uh, it's, a, it's, it's good. It's the, it's the spirit that quickens. So the word works with the spirit to quicken. It's a quickening force. Things are, that are dead, it will quicken it. Oh, your immune system is down. Let the word come in. Let the word receive the word. Believe the word. It will boost. Oh, it's a booster. It will boost your immune system. It will boost whatever the, 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 the is lacking in your system that the enemy is using against you. It will boost it. It will boost it. I see the word doing a miracle for you in the name of Jesus. Let's look at an example of somebody who embraced the word and got his testimony. In the book of John, chapter 4, verse 48, that was a man came and um, his son, and when you read from verse 46, it talks about how this gentleman, and Jesus came to the, uh, to, uh, into Canaan of Galilee, and when he, he uh, wh sorry, where he made, made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick in Capernaum. And the man came to Jesus. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. And then Jesus said, go your way. Then Jesus said unto him, except ye see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Believe and you will see it. It's, you don't have to see it before you believe. Believe and you will see it. In the, in the things of God, when it comes to Christ, seeing is not believing. Believing is seeing. 
Believing is seeing. What you believe is what you see. It's not the other way around. So he said, and, and, and unless there's, so human nature is, unless we see, we don't believe. But Jesus said, blessed are is the one who hasn't seen but believes. So really, you can see, you can believe without seeing. And once you believe without seeing, you see it's John chapter 20. You can, you can believe without seeing. You can believe without seeing. In whom having not seen, yet believing, rejoicing. First Peter chapter 1 verse 8, talking about Jesus and talking to the saints. He said, whom having not seen, ye love. In whom do ye see, uh, you now, do now ye see him not, yet believing. And then you don't just not believe it. You are rejoicing with joy unspeakable, full of glory. So you begin to experience all kinds of amazing things that ordinary people cannot experience. Why? Because you have you are believing even though you haven't seen. And so Jesus said, unless you, you are behaving, you, that's human nature. Unless you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. Then look at the next verse. The number of man said, sir, the lecture is enough. I, the, the, uh, this, my son, is at the point of death. Just come down before the guy. Other than that, he will die. Just come down. I will need you to come. Jesus said, okay, go your way. Your son leave it. Jesus said unto him, go your way. Your son leave it. And the man, be, ah, oh, hallelujah. The man, another way of putting it, the man caught the word. <laughs> he caught the word. He said, I got it. I got it. He, Jesus made a commitment. God spoke. When God speaks, He's, he's committed to what he said. So it's, Jesus said, go your way, your son leave it. The man believed the word. He caught the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And guess what? The rest is history. They told him, your son leave it. Your son leave it. He leave it. Why? Because, and then when he, he, he was just scientific, he decided to be scientific. So he asked them, at what time, what time did he start to amend? I like that King James didn't begin to amend. In other words, to get healed. He, 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 like they started, 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 started recovering. They said to him yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. The fever not began to let. It just left. The fever left. Jesus was not there. The man was not there. The transaction was happening somewhere. Somewhere. And then it, it, it manifested it's somewhere in Galilee. And then it's manifesting in Capernaum. So look at it. Then the man realized that. So the father knew it was at the same hour in which Jesus said, the key word there is said, said, said unto him, thy son live there. What did he say? He's, what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say? Thy son live there. I can't hear you. Say it louder. Yeah, Jesus said, thy son live it. And the man believed thy son live it. That statement, he caught it. He caught it and he went with it. He didn't go without a word. He went with the word. He went with the word. He went with the word. There was a man who was crippled and couldn't be healed. He was lying by a pool called Bethesda. And people were coming around and an angel comes occasionally into the pool and then steps and stares in the pool. So whoever gets into the pool first gets healed. And but he before he could get in, people get because he was paralyzed. And so Jesus saw him lying there, and he knew that this man had been there for a while. Jesus went to him and he said, Will you be made whole? And will thou be made whole? And the man said, I don't have anybody to put me in the in the water. I've been here for so long. I don't have anyone to put me in the pool because just when the guest said, before I could say Jack, somebody has quickly jumped into it. Listen, stop that excuse that people go. People can go ahead of you if you can catch a word. People can go ahead of you if you can catch a word. Receive a word. Receive your word of miracle in the name of Jesus. So, um, and so the man was ranting, and Jesus, Jesus said, I like what Jesus said. And then Jesus said, um, take your bed and walk. Huh? Yes, take your bed and walk. Ta rise. Take your bed. So he rose. Uh, uh, if I've risen, then let me take my bed. Immediately the man was made whole. And he took his bed. So he was made whole. That's because he couldn't walk. He couldn't rise. So when Jesus says, rise, take your bed, what did he do? He rose, took his bed. But unfortunately, for his enemies, it was a Sabbath day. And the Sabbath day is like 
is God to them. It's God to the Jews. You don't, you are not supposed to even draw a line in the sand. So you are not supposed to do anything. So in, in, in some parts of Jerusalem or uh, Israel, currently, they still enforce that. So, and they have lifts. And so on Sabbath day, they will employ a Gentile, I'm sure maybe a Ghanaian or Nigerian, somebody, <laughs> or someone, someone from India. They will employ the Gentile to do the lift, press the buttons, because a Jew is not supposed to do any work. That's, I mean, the, the very re religious one. You are not supposed to do any work. And the Pharisees were like spiritual police, like the way, the way we have in, uh, in uh, everywhere. In Some people, their job is like to keep checking who is not doing things right. They are, they, they just scan and looking, people who are not doing things right. Why is this, this lady always um, sitting near this guy? Um, why is this, uh, why is it? Uh, and they, they are not focusing on what they are supposed to do. They always, Gustapo, Gustapo, Mr. Gustapo, he always has to, he will pick something on somebody. They see faults everywhere, but apart from their life. Gustapo will see faults everywhere but them. Pharisees are like that. They are the holy, uh, the religious Gustapos in the days of Jesus. So watch this. The man took his bread. Why did he take his bread? Because verse 8, verse 8 is the reason why he took his bread. Jesus said unto him, rise. Jesus, it's a bad day, so you shouldn't have asked to take your bed. He said, rise, take up thy bed, Kabado Shadahaya. Now we will know whether you have received the word. If you have received the word, you won't leave what is not convenient for you out. You won't leave it out. You take it all and swallow it, swallow it all. Bishop Oyedepo, Papa says that take it raw and swallow it all. Take it raw and swallow it all. So he, he, you can't say, okay. I will obey. They said, I'm believing God for a miracle. I want to catch a word. But they said, everyone who is here, make sure you are stay, uh, paying attention or keep your video on where possible. Sometimes some people, it's not possible, which is understandable. But some, they know it's possible. Between you and God, you know it's possible. You are supposed to do it. But you just don't want to do it. No one should tell me what I should do. Just preach the word I receive. Preach the word I receive. You see, you are taking some and leaving some out. Now, here, Jesus said, "Take the, rise up. Take thy bed and walk. You can't expect to rise and walk without taking thy bed. That means you have not caught the word. You have not caught the word. You are just coming to use God for, uh, for an, to, uh, to uh, get to an end. So people want to use God as a means to an end, but they are not coming to catch, obey God and relate with God based on his word. So Jesus said, Rise, take up thy bed. And the problem was not the rising. The, the problem was not the walking, but the problem was take, I, take up thy bed. It was bringing a social problem, a political issue. It was a hot political issue of the day. But so, watch this. Look at the verse, verse 9. He did that. And then immediately, but it was a Sabbath day. Oh, you don't take up a bed on Sabbath day. Uh oh, the Gustapos, the, the, the religious Gustapos were there observing. And the Jews therefore said unto him that that was killed. It is, they didn't say, wow, this is amazing testimony. No, they, are not, they didn't care about that. It is a Sabbath day. Oh no, look at that guy. He's holding his bed in town. Oh, oh, oh my word, oh my word. Oh, this is not good. This is not, it is not lawful for thee to carry bed. Ah! <laughs> it is not lawful. It is not politically correct for you to carry bed. Ah! They say, oh no. Everybody was watching that this guy will be imprisoned. This guy's getting himself in trouble. Why is he carrying his bed? Did he have a choice? Did he have a choice? He, you, are, you are looking at a man that has embraced the word, who has caught a word. A man who has caught a word doesn't have a choice to leave some out. Give your tithe, give your offering. Stop the, the lying. Stop the sinning. Cut that ties from that boy. 
cut that links from that girl. Stop the quarreling with your mother. Stop the disobeying and fighting with family and your husband. Stop maltreating your wife. Stop insulting your. This, this is part. It's a whole package. It's a whole package. Don't take some like. Don't come to God's word like buffet. You can You can buffet God's word. Take it all and swallow it raw. Or take it raw and swallow it all. And then, so Jesus said, so they said, the people said, it is not lawful. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. Do you know what the guy, the guy had an answer. That's what I want us to do. He answered and said, he answered them, he that made me whole, the same said to me, the same said to me, the same said to me, I'm saying to you, on the account of God's word and his power working here, I am saying to you, is there not a bomb in Gilead? There is a physician in Gilead. There is a bomb in Gilead. None shall say I am sick. He took himself, took away our infirmity. You are free. You are whole. You are entering your season of ease. You are, we are in the month of triumph. You are triumphing. You are triumphing in, in this year of victory. I see you. I'm telling you on the account of God's word, so shall it be. He that made me whole. Thank you, Jesus. He that made me whole, the same said to me, take up thy bed and walk. So they said, ah, who is this person who asked you to take your bed? Not who made you whole. They don't, they don't care about uh, your healing. They said, who? What man is it that said to you, take up your bed and walk? Ah, but can't you see this man who has struggled for many years, 38 years old man? Struggled for many years, never been healed. Is that not good enough for you to even celebrate for now and let us sort out the other issues? No, no, they are not interested. They are not interested. Who said to you, take up your bed and walk? Let's go after him. But the point here is, I don't want to belabor the other part. The point here is, the man caught a word. What is the word? The one who, he, listen to his words. He who said to me, he who said to me, okay, so he who made me a whole, the same said to me. That's, 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 that's his point. And when you read chapter 9, verse, this is chapter 5, verse 11. When you jump to four, four chapters later, chapter 9, verse 11, the man said, he, washed, he, he, he put saliva on my mind, anointed my eyes, and he said to me, go to the pool of si uh, Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I, I just did what, I caught the word and see me. They said, are you not the one who is blind? How come you are healed? How did you get healed? On a Sabbath day, you are not supposed to these people. You are not supposed to be healed on a Sabbath day. Who opened? How, how are your eyes open? How? And he said, uh, he just met the man called Jesus. <laughs> he said that man. That me, I don't know. There's a man. That man called Jesus met clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, "Go to the pool of Siloam." And I went. I obeyed the word, and <laughs> I received my sight. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. Brothers and sisters, Pastor, what's the point you are trying to make? Catch the word. Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn. You can also subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.